Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to do something slightly different from my other tutorials. Uh, so from time to time, I'll run into a problem that can be solved with a quick and easy Python script. Now, I thought I could start recording these videos so you can see how these scripts can help automate a process that would otherwise be boring or repetitive or just prone to mistakes. So let me know how you all like this kind of video and if you find it useful. I'm hoping that by seeing how we solve these simple real world problems that it might give you some ideas for how you can automate your own repetitive tasks. So the problem that I ran into today was that I downloaded a lot of videos from a free class online that I wanted to watch while I was traveling back home for the holidays. But when I downloaded these videos, the titles were formatted in such a way that they wouldn't be sorted properly on my phone's playlist. So this is just a small example here. This, this isn't the actual class files that I downloaded, but this is just a small example that I made up so that you can kind of get an idea of what the problem was. So you can see here that they put a title at the beginning of the file name, and then they have a dash, and then they had the course name, and then they had a number which shows in what order these videos should be watched. So for example, this number one is the first uh, video in the class, the number two should be the second video, number three should be the third, and so on. But these file names get sorted alphabetically. So you can see how uh, them having a custom title at the beginning of the file name can make the order in which these videos are supposed to be played all out of whack. So you can imagine if I had hundreds of videos for a specific class, how this would start to be kind of a pain if I was doing this on my phone and I watched the first video and then I had to scroll through a bunch of videos to find the second one. It'd be really nice if they were just in order so that they could just autoplay in the order that they're supposed to. So really, I want to rename all these files and I want this number here to be at the beginning. Now, I could go in and do this manually, but uh, the classes that I downloaded were a lot more than this. There were hundreds of them. So it would take forever to go in and manually rename all of these so that the number is at the beginning. So I'd really just like to write a quick and easy Python script to do this for me. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have a blank Python file here. And the first thing I'm gonna, that I'm gonna do is import the OS module. This lets us navigate the file system and change file names and things like that. So now one of the first things I'm gonna to wanna to do is to change my directory to the directory that holds all of my files. And we can do that with os.chdir, and then we need to put in the path to the folder that holds those video files. Now there might be a faster way to do this, but uh, to get a file uh, path quickly, what I like to do is just open up Finder, and then drag the folder that I want into the terminal, and then it will autocomplete that entire path. And then from there, I can copy that and then just paste it into my program here. And if I save that, now I'm gonna check and make sure that I'm in the directory that I wanna be in. So I'm gonna do a print of an OS and then a git current working directory, and I'm going to run that. And you can see that it prints out after it changes directory to this location, then you can see that we are in the correct location where our files are. So now that we know that we're in the right directory, let's go ahead and try to print out all of the files that are in this directory. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a 4f in os.lister, and this will list everything in the directory. And just to start off here, I'm just gonna do a printf to see if I'm getting all the correct file names. And you can see here at the output that it did print out all of those file names. So you're going to kind of see that when you write scripts like this, that there's a lot of trial and error. So instead of just directly jumping in and trying to write out a solution, uh, you'll likely want to do one thing at a time. So at first we changed directory and then we printed that out to make sure we were in the right spot. And then we looped through all the files in that directory and we printed out all those files to make sure that we were getting those correctly. And then we can kind of just build up a solution one step at a time. So now that we can see that we have all of our file names here, let's go ahead and split off the extension from the rest of the file name. And the way that we do this is we do this with a command called os.splitext and we'll pass in that file. Now, if I print this out, then you can see that what it gives us on, actually that's not os.splitText, that's os.path.splitText. So if I save that and run that, you can see what it gives us is a tuple, and each tuple, the first element 
has this file name here without the extension. And then the second part is the extension. So I'm going to use this tuple and I'm going to set this equal to two variables. So the first one I'm going to call file name and then a comma. And then the next one I'm going to call file ext. And I'll just set that equal to those tuples. And now underneath here, if I was to print out the file name, then we have the file name without the extension. So now let's remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to rename this file to where these numbers are at the beginning. And in this specific example, we can see that there are these hyphens between uh, the title and then the course name and then the number. So let's see what happens if we take this file name and do a split and we'll do a split on that hyphen. So if I save that and run it, now you can see that we have three elements. We have the title and the course name and then the number. So now, just like the line above, I'm gonna take what we just printed out and I'm going to set three different variables here. I'm gonna call this F title and then I'll call the second one F course and then I'll call the last one F num and I'll set that equal to those elements. So now, just to make sure that we did that right, I'll print out uh, one of these at a time. So you can see how we have the title, and if I print out the course, they should all be the same. And if I copy and print the number, then they should all be different there. So now let's see if I can print out a formatted string in a way that I want my file to be represented. So a formatted string, I can put in placeholders here. So let's say that I want the number here with a dash, and then I want the course name and then a dash, and then I want the title here at the end. And then I'll also want the extension, so I'm gonna put in a placeholder for that too. So I'll do a dot format, and this is where we fill in what those placeholders were. So first, I wanted the number, so I'll copy that and paste it in first. And then I wanted the course, so I'll grab that and put that in. And then I wanted the title, so I'll copy that and put that in. And then I also wanted the file extension here, so I'll save that. And actually, just to make this consistent with the rest of the program, I'm gonna call this F underscore EXT, and I'm gonna call this F underscore name there. So let me replace those. Okay, so now let me print this out. Now you can see that this is close to what we want. Uh, now we do have some weird spaces here between these hyphens and before the file extension. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of that. So in order to remove those, I'm gonna take these three variables here and I'm just gonna set them equal to their same variable, but instead, on, let me copy all three of these here, and instead I'm going to do a dot strip on the end. And this will strip away any white space that is on the left or the right. So now if I save that and run it, you can see that now when we print this out, that those spaces are taken care of. So this is looking pretty good. We're just about to the point where we're finished up. Um, now I could probably go ahead and rename these files to this output uh, and be done with it. It would uh, sort a lot of the files in the way that I want them sorted. But uh, there's a couple of things here for personal preference that I don't like. Like for example, I don't like the number sign being here at the beginning of the file name. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna strip that off by uh, grabbing everything from the second character on. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and do a one and then a colon there to go to the end of that string. Now if I run that, then you can see that uh, now it's stripped off that number sign there at the beginning. And another thing that I notice here is that if we're gonna be sorting these by the file names, that actually uh, this one and this 10 will most likely uh, be next to each other. So after it plays the first video, uh, the next one in line will probably be the 10 because uh, it'll just sort it based off of the first character here, which is a one. So all the ones will be grouped together. So one way that we can get around this is to pad these single digits with zeros. So instead it'll be zero one, zero two, and then that'll put all of the single digits at the beginning, and then the 10 will be at the end. So the way that you can do a zero padded string is with a method called Z fill on the string. So I'm gonna come up here to the number and I'm gonna do a Z fill. And then the parameter that you pass in is how wide you want the string to be. So I want the string to be two digits wide, so zero one. So if I save that and run it, 
Now you can see that all my single digits are padded with a zero, and if the digit is already uh, two, as uh, the 10 is, then it won't do anything to it. So now this is looking good. Now we can pretty much uh, rename this in any way that we want now uh, based on our personal preference. So really, uh, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of don't think that I need the uh, course name there either. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that out. So I'm going to take out the placeholder for the course and then take it out of the format. And if I rerun it, now you can see that that's gone. And this is looking good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and rename all of the files um, to this new format. So I'm going to go ahead and take away this print statement. And that string that we printed out, I'm just going to set that to a variable called new name and set that equal to that. And now if we remember here, we're within a for loop, so we have the original file here as f. So to rename this, I'm just going to do an os.rename, and within here I'm going to pass in the original file, and then what I want to rename it to is this new name. So I'll save that. And now I'm going to go ahead and before I run it, I'm just going to let this take up half the screen here, and I'm going to let the folder that I was within take up half the screen here. And you can see that whenever I run this, I'm going to go ahead and run it now. And within this directory, it did exactly what we wanted. So it took our new name and it replaced the old file name with the new. So you can see how a simple script like this would save a ton of time if you had uh, tens or hundreds of files that you had to rename instead of going in and doing them manually, uh, which also you could easily make mistakes. Uh, this allows you to do everything all in one shot and it's less prone to errors. And also you can save these short simple scripts for a later use if you ever run into the problem again. So that's going to do it for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys think about me doing this kind of video from time to time. I know that I didn't go into as much step-by-step -step detail, but kind of the idea here is that if you uh, see a specific problem being solved with a quick and easy script, that maybe it'll give you an idea for how you can solve some real world problems and easily automate some of the tasks that maybe you had to do that were repetitive or uh, prone to mistakes and things like that. So hopefully you guys found this useful. If you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.